Hello YouTube, I'm Joey Russo, Disabled Competitive Pistol Shooter. And as I wrote in the description of this video, I thought there might be some interest in uh, motor learning concepts and shooting. Specifically, I'm talking about uh, open and closed loop trigger manipulation. So this material is an excerpt from uh, my handgun principles class. And in my class, uh, trigger represents the second priority. You can see that at the top of the slide there. Uh, if you're interested, the first uh, in my curriculum is uh, first priority is grip, because you have to be able to grip the pistol properly to be able to fire without disturbing alignment. But anyway, like I mentioned, we're going to keep this really narrow because there is a, a lot more to this. Uh, we're going to keep this to trigger manipulation. So any discussion needs to begin with an understanding of the physiology involved in completing movements. And that's aka executing motor programs. So we have two motor program control systems at our disposal. The first is open loop, also known as system one. This is our default movement control system. And, and, and purposely, this, this is subconscious execution of movement. If you think about all the movements that you do, if you had to apply conscious thought to them, well, that would be pretty inefficient. The advantages of this system, this open loop subconscious system, is uh, we have faster processing speeds. This is where we have the concept of multitasking capabilities. The downside of this system is lower capacity for precision in our movement, meaning higher potential movement errors because we're, we're doing them without any sort of quality control. It's just based, as we're gonna learn, on simply hitting the, the play button and, and executing. The second system is closed loop, also known as system two. Now this requires a conscious decision to utilize. I mean, to leave the default open loop subconscious mechanism takes conscious decision. This is conscious execution of movement the downside of this is a slower processing speeds. Uh, the conscious mind can only complete one task at a time. Now, it might be able to complete single tasks in a sequential mode of execution, but they're still single task uh, execution. The upside of this type of uh, control is a higher capacity of precision and movement, meaning lower potential movement errors. Here's an example of open loop motor control, again, as it relates strictly to trigger manipulation. So our default open loop control system starts with the executive or the brain. Let me get my uh, laser pointer going here. There we go. Starts with the executive or brain sending a motor program, in this case, accelerated trigger press or simply ATP to the effector, which is our trigger finger. The effector then carries out the ATP motor program and the movement is quick and completed. So brain says, hey, I need to accelerate a trigger press and it's simply press trigger pow, press trigger pow, press trigger pow, real quick. No, nothing very simple on that one. So within this system one open loop motor control, again, subconscious movement execution, this is default. This is a motor control system, again, subconscious, used for actions too fast to evaluate within the movement. This is a key point. So fast, can't evaluate within the actual movement. Once the motor program is started, like I've said earlier, like think about hitting the play button, it is difficult to stop or modify, modify rather, while performing the movement. The movement is too fast to interpret feedback or detect errors within the action until after it's completed. And again, keeping this within a shooting realm, this typically is for, uh, can be hits on target. We evaluate the hits on target. Oh, he's a right-hander, he's hitting low left. And that is an example of how we can uh, get the feedback after the movement. An accelerated trigger press is subconsciously executed with an open loop motor control system. Again, this is our default way that we execute movements. 
of the node here at the bottom, trigger reset is also subconsciously completed via open loop control. We'll talk more about trigger reset here in a minute. Let me get rid of my laser pointer. And there we go. Now, we move to a closed loop motor control example. This is trigger manipulation or with a closed loop, and it starts with a conscious decision. And the executive brain selecting controlled trigger press or CTP motor program based on the engagement metrics. That, for example, the time, is there a time constraint, the distance, the accuracy requirements and or risk of the shot. The executive then sends a motor program to the effector, the trigger finger again. The effector moves in a slow enough manner so the feedback can be sent to a comparator, an error detection center. So because the conscious mind is so involved in process of trigger finger movement, if errors are detected, those errors are sent back to the executive for movement modification or termination. The modification or termination motor program is then sent back to the effector. This revolution effectively closes the loop. And this is how we come up with the name closed loop. Again, how this works with the laser pointer, I would first, based on the, the demands of the shot, decide to say, hey, you know what? Accelerated trigger press is not going to work. The brain's going to say, okay, I'm going to decide to consciously control this trigger manipulation. So the brain then says, hey, trigger finger, I need to control trigger press. We're going to learn, we get to the wall, and we gradually increase pressure all the while. Now the comparator is shown for clarity outside of the brain, but obviously the comparator component exists in the brain. The comparator evaluates that control trigger press. Yeah, control nice and easy. Keep it up, trigger finger. Yeah, feels good, nice and easy, no jerk involved. And oh, control trigger press to the rear, straight to the rear, yep. Comparator says looking good, and so on. And, and that continues until the shot goes off. Now, most shooters, I think, have had an occasion where they're getting ready to break a shot, but then they catch themselves either, uh, quote, jerking the trigger or flinching or bracing for recoil, what have you. That's an example of the comparator, that quality control assurance piece coming in if you're saying, hey, I need to control trigger press, and as you're pressing, all of a sudden you, you get that hitch or you catch yourself getting ready to, to flinch, that's the comparator saying, stop, reset, let's go ahead and try this again. So in the closed loop motor control, again, this is system two, conscious movement execution. Some key pieces of this. This is a control system used for discrete movements slow enough to catch feedback while being performed. If you remember from Accelerator, we learned that you hit the play button and it's gone. This is slow enough to where that comparator, that quality control piece is catching and evaluating the feedback of what's happening. Next line, the movement is slow enough. Errors can be detected within the movement and the movement can be stopped or modified anywhere during its execution. Again, that comparator quality control piece. A controlled trigger press, CTP for short, should consciously be used with a closed loop motor control system. Again, we note a closed loop control system is not for automatic subconsciously controlled movements, in this case specific to the trigger reset, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Leaving the default subconsciously controlled open loop and putting your mind into a closed loop motor control system requires a conscious decision to be made. Otherwise, you will remain in or return to the default subconscious open loop execution. And open loop, again, is where the accelerated trigger press lives. And we're going to learn there's some uh, limitations to that. So as, as we conceptualize trigger manipulation, it's good to uh, uh, identify what I'll call movement waypoints within the trigger's travel. Here again, let me get my laser going. Boom. All right, the first thing we're gonna talk about 
and the first waypoint or position is touch. All we're doing is my finger is contacting the face of the trigger, and if there's a trigger safety tab like on this Glock present, that is being depressed, but that's it. That's touch. Now the area between touch and this next area, wall, that's where the slack or pre-travel is. The slack or pre-travel. That is the initial movement of the trigger, that preliminary travel to the point of where it then stops at this point here at the wall of the trigger. The area between then the wall and reset, the space in here, this is where press is gonna occur. This is where any additional pressure placed on the trigger in this area, this, this zone, if you will, this phase, is gonna cause the pistol to ultimately fire. And when it fires, we get to the reset position, this rearmost uh, hash mark here, or phase of the trigger. And from that point, we'll then reset the trigger to one of the locations depending on what we're doing. Is it an accelerated trigger press? If we're running in that default, open loop, subconscious accelerated trigger press, once we hit reset, we're gonna to reset to position past the wall, and then we're going to accelerate back through the wall and fire the pistol again. I don't care if I'm at the wall or beyond the wall, maybe all the way back out to touch, but I'm going to accelerate all the way through and fire again. That would be an accelerated trigger press. If I was shooting in a controlled trigger press, that conscious closed loop, then we're gonna learn here that we're gonna do all of our work to the wall. So a controlled trigger press shot would be after the shot, resetting, getting back to the wall, and then gradually increasing pressure on the trigger through that press phase or zone slow enough to be able to detect errors and being able to stop or or uh, modify that trigger press. And we'll learn more about that uh, next. So here is a example of the open loop subconscious accelerated trigger press. That is, as I just explained, uh, from the first shot, that is like from trigger finger index, I would touch the trigger, I would then press and then reset. Subsequent shots are just reset, press, reset. Notice in the accelerated trigger press, we do not visit the wall phase, we accelerate past it, hence the name, accelerate, accelerated trigger press. Here's a little video. Touch. Press reset. Press reset. I don't care about the wall, I'm accelerating past it. Press reset. All I'm doing is getting the trigger far enough out to some location beyond the wall so I turn the gun back on. Next is the closed loop conscious control trigger press, CTP. Now first shot on this one from a trigger finger index position, we're gonna touch the trigger, but then we're gonna efficiently get through that slack, that pre-travel pre to the wall. Once we're at the wall, then we're going to gradually increase pressure as it trying to uh, conceptualize here with the word press we're going to gradually increase pressure so enough that if there's an error i can stop it or modify it and then i'm going to reset subsequent shots back to the wall repeat gradual press of the trigger able to stop or modify movement reset back to the wall and again unlike an accelerated trigger press Notice in uh, the control trigger press, we do all of our work from the wall phase. Here's a little example. Touching the trigger, depressing trigger safety tab if present, get to the wall, gradually increase pressure, bam, reset back to the wall and repeat. Gradually increase pressure, pow, reset back to the wall, gradually increase pressure back to the wall, gradually increase pressure so on and so forth. Now, talking about the reset open loop motor program. Remember, regardless of manipulating the trigger in an accelerated or controlled manner, reset occurs automatically as its own separate 
open loop motor program completed subconsciously and independently of any type of trigger press. It's its own thing. Accelerated or controlled deals with the pressing of the trigger that is in a rearward motion, a separate subconsciously executed open loop motor program is the reset. Every shot taken must begin efficiently at either the touch, wall, or press phase. That is with rearward movement of the trigger, never with a reset, forward movement of the trigger. This is also known as, some people who do this, uh, click banging, pinning the trigger to the rear, otherwise having the pistol turned off. Now I know there might be some folks that do shoot like this, and we're talking within the realm of handguns here, uh, understand it's very inefficient, one thing. Number two, it can set yourself up for a timing mechanism by which to uh, brace for recoil and things of that nature. So let's not do that. So trigger press and the reset open loop motor program. So whether using, this is a key point, whether using controlled trigger press or accelerated trigger press, accuracy is a result of the trigger press, that is the rearward movement of the trigger. In other words, the higher quality of trigger press made will normally equate to higher accuracy attained. Speed, however, is a byproduct of trigger reset. The quicker you can turn the gun back on, the sooner you can press the trigger again which is why reset must always be performed subconsciously and immediately. Uh, for example, during recoil, after any shot fired, whether the shot's accelerated or controlled, I want the gun turned on back as possible, quickly as possible. The concept of a trigger control spectrum. So we understand that open loop accelerated trigger press and the closed loop controlled trigger press only represent polar opposites of a variable spectrum of trigger control. It is not necessarily an either or situation, meaning similar to a radio dial between a classical music station on one end, we'll call that closed loop control trigger press, and a hard rock station on the other, we'll call that open loop accelerate trigger press. There are many other music variations appropriate for the circumstances. Successful shooters must be able to recognize the trigger control demands of their engagement. Again, that's the time, distance, accuracy, and risk metrics juxtaposed with their capabilities, which we conceptualize as the three Ts. We'll talk about that in a minute. With those two things, we then flow through the trigger control spectrum as needed to be successful. This graphic tries to illustrate accelerate trigger press and control trigger press attributes. Let me get my laser pointer again. Starting here on the left, this is our open loop, subconsciously controlled accelerated trigger press. This is our default mode of operation. Most shooters on a eight inch target are gonna be able to use this engagement scheme out to about seven, 10 yards. We understand this is quite a bit faster because there is no quality control or comparator function within the movement. You're simply hitting the play button and you're gonna burn that target down. As a result, these tend to be easier engagements or easier target. The priority in this realm is speed. The focus on, we're not getting too much into the visual piece, but within the accelerated uh, engagement process, this is target focus. Coming over to the right side, we go to closed loop or conscious controlled trigger press. It starts with making a decision to leave our default mode of operation, which is subconscious. This takes over where the uh, accelerated trigger press leaves off, distances of about seven to 10 yards and beyond. We know this is a much slower process because we have that quality control comparator function evaluating the trigger press as it's occurring. It's slow enough to where I can stop or modify the trigger press movement. These tend to be harder targets, and the priority in this realm is accuracy. 
On this side, our focus will be to consciously direct and remember the conscious mind can only complete one task at a time or focus on one thing at a time. And we'll have that focus on either our trigger or grip. Uh, both tend to function. And again, that would be something that would be expanded upon in a, in a full class. Kind of cheesy, I know, but it's always a balance of speed and accuracy. Once again, we have that radio dial, both ends of the, uh, the spectrum. And what we want is as you go through, you're constantly assessing the engagement, determining to where to flow within the spectrum that is adjusting that radio dial. The question comes up then, well, wait a minute, how come one person is able to solve a shooting problem towards the open loop side of the spectrum, while another shooter must flow closer to the closed loop control to be successful in its dressing, solving the same problem? And that's where we come up, where you've seen it mentioned before, the three T's. This is a way to conceptualize on the individual level the differences between shooters. The quality of and amount of training leads to talent. Now, I define talent as a re reliable, predictive uh, skill set. This is not the one-off Instagram run. This is what you can do reliably. That training and that talent, once you have that, another component that can play a role in determining how you solve the shooting problem, whether open or closed loop, is technology employed. And the best uh, example of that I can give you is a red dot. An optics equipped pistol will generally increase our open loop, subconscious, accelerated, effective range based just on the vision component. Now, whew, with all that, we now give you an example of how to put this into uh, uh, use. In this case, when we build our, our training, we should be asking ourselves, hey, is this going to be an open loop accelerated exercise? Is it going to be a controlled uh, closed loop exercise? Is it going to be a combination of both? And it certainly can be, and, and at times it should be. In this case, based on our recent lane trip, uh, this is a, uh, a accelerated drill known as doubles. What happens is this is performed in isolation because we're just trying to isolate and take the draw out of it. I'm going to be pointed in on a target with my grip structure already formed. My finger is going to be touching the trigger. That's at that touch waypoint. In my case with a Glock here, depressing that trigger safety tab, but that's it. I'm going to be target focused. That means I'm looking through the iron sights at a specific point of the target. The sights are only uh, viewed peripherally in the foreground. I only perceive them, I'm looking through them, only perceiving them in the foreground in front of the point of the target I'm focused at. An accelerated trigger press is used to deliver two shots within point, uh, 0.30 second or faster split time. Split time, we're talking about the time between shots. So you need to have a shot timer for this. We shoot this at five to seven yards. Because again, I want this well within the range of the accelerated trigger press. I'm going to use an eight inch circle target. Now you can obviously increase the distance as your skill set improves based on three T's. You can push this out as far as you want and, and many uh, highly skilled folks do. You want to ensure when you do this exercise, you want sufficient pause between each pair, between each two shots, resetting the start conditions for each repetition. So it should look something like this. Okay, are you ready? Stand by. Accelerating past the wall. Target focus. The next example, now we're gonna switch, swing go to the other end, the polar opposite of that radio dial, if you will of that spectrum of control. This is a closed loop controlled trigger press drill, known as 12 dot. What's gonna happen is each shot is gonna start from the holster, hands naturally at sides. Your finger is gonna touch the trigger, obviously only once you clear the holster and safely point it down range. You're then gonna move the trigger finger efficiently through that slack pre-travel to the wall waypoint 
at which point you begin that controlled trigger press. Remember, we do all our work from the wall in a controlled trigger press. Gradually increasing pressure to the shot. Once the shot goes off, I reset under recoil, get ready for shot number next. Irons are referenced visually because we need to attain that needed alignment, that relationship between front and rear sight. And when, then we place that alignment on a specific point of the target. A controlled trigger press is used to deliver single accurate shot. You can, on a variation of this exercise, you can progress to two accurate shots. Again, three T's dependent. You want to, uh, this is shot at two to three yards on a 12 by each dot, one inch dot target. And again, you can increase the distance or even add a part time as the skill set improves. Use three four round magazines to work in reload reps. Uh, in this case, I've already shot my first mag. I'm into my second and third because I didn't want to belabor this. I'll also add to this uh, the value, a common uh, uh, challenge is the separation of the draw stroke energy from that first shot, particularly when I got to shoot a precision accuracy demanding shot. I've got to be able to separate the holster, the, the draw from the holster energy from that trigger finger. I have to isolate the trigger finger movement. And this is a good exercise to uh, reinforce that. Come down here. Get to the wall. Press the trigger. Reset. Reholster. Get to the wall. Gentle press. Reset into recoil. Get to the wall. Gentle press. Reload. Reload's kind of goofy because I have this bench table thing in front of me, right in my workspace. From the wall, reset. Wall, reset. Let's indexing before reholstering. Index, reholster. One thing I'll also add to this, which i sorry I didn't give a, a better demonstration of, is the concept of follow through that is preparing for shot number next. After I shoot that round, I should be, I'm resetting back to the wall under recoil. You gotta take my word for that. But I should take a moment to pause, reacquire sights as if I'm prepared to take the next shot, even though in this contrived drill, I'm only uh, shooting one round. All right, folks, well, hopefully you have a better understanding of subconscious and conscious execution of the shooting motor program as it relates to trigger manipulation. And again, I hope you capture the value in this. One, uh, for example, as a competitive shooter, once you understand this concept and the two ways that we have to uh, complete the shooting motor program, in this case, specific to trigger control, you can look at a stage and go, okay, I can, I can use accelerated trigger press and attack those targets. This one over here, based on where I'm at with my skill set and the three T's, I'm going to have to attack this in a, in a closed loop controlled fashion. Same with your exercise. When you plan your training, and hopefully you're planning your training, directed efforts are the most efficient. You can set up your, your drills, your exercises in, in bracing. Is it open loop? Is it going to be closed loop? Is it going to be a combination of both? And that's certainly a powerful thing is to change things up, to jump loops, as we say. Anyway, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to place them in the comments section below. Also in the narrative, I, I don't, I'm unable to teach anymore because of my situation. Uh, if you want to learn more about these concepts, I have a, a list of instructors that I can definitely vouch for and uh, you should check them out. Thanks for your uh, attention.